So, uh, all right, it's the book of Psalms, chapter 85. And I'm just going to read one verse, a very familiar uh, verse of Scripture. Verse number 6. And the psalmist David is crying out to God for revival. I heard somebody mention that this morning and tonight. We need a movement of God in our lives and our homes, our churches and all. And uh, he said in Psalms 85, verses number 6, Wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee? Psalmist is just that and a simple question. You can go uh, in front of it. And it talks about uh, things that God has done. And you go after it. It talks about things that God is going to do. But in verse number 6, it's a very present tense verse. Uh, in fact, you, you, you can put it like this. Wilt thou not revive us again right now that thy people might rejoice. We talk about revival is going to come, will come. But we could have revival now if we want it. Amen. Uh, a revival is a removing uh, from deadness. It's a return to consciousness of God. It's a living again. It's uh, uh, regaining consciousness of God again. Whatever you want to say about revival, one writer wrote, uh, it's God at work restoring His church to health. It's uh, a return to the first love resulting in conversion of sinners. Every time revival's ever come, sinners got converted. The revival I've ever been in. I'm talking about a real revival. I'm not talking about coming up here and preaching five nights or going somewhere and preaching five nights. I'm talking about when God really moved in revival. Everyone I've ever seen, uh, we used to go three or four weeks. The longest revival I've ever seen was ten weeks. It went ten weeks one time revival. Never missed a night. Not one service. We went ten straight weeks, Saturday right on through. And uh, had a lot of people say, but at first... God began to work in the church and then sinners become to get saved. It'd be worth revival just to see somebody get saved. It'd be worth revival uh, to see some of your friends and loved ones and children and kids and parents get saved uh, by the grace of God. And the psalmist is just asking a little simple question, very simple question, wilt thou not? Now we know God will and we know God wants to and we know God can and the psalmist is just asking God the question, wilt thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee. I'm going to preach just for a few minutes, very simple message, but on the revival that we need. The revival that we need. The revival we need at our church. The revival we need here at your church. The kind of revival that we need that the psalmist David uh, might be asking for. And I believe he is asking for it. First of all, uh, I want to say we need a revival that will resurrect the church. Amen resurrect the church. He said, wilt thou not revive us? Revive us again. Will you not bring us to life again? Uh, people like life, amen. I don't know about you, I like life. When people get older, and I've not got that far yet, but most people get older, they start taking vitamins and they take everything, trying to find a little life, amen, trying to find a little uh, strength and all. And so we like life. We like, that's why the world lives all week long to get back to the world because they think there's life there. There's excitement there. Well, we need a resurrection of life in the church. When people come in here, they need to know that we are alive. I'm going to tell you, everything the world's got's dead or dying. And the only thing that's got life in it, the only thing that's going to live forever is the church. And the church is not dead. She's alive. And we have a living, resurrected Lord that he lives in our heart. And we need to resurrect from deadness to life. And when people come among us to know that we are alive and we have a living Lord that lives within our hearts. Nobody likes to hang around dead people. Amen. Anybody ever took a vacation and stayed a week at the funeral home? No, we don't like deadness. We don't even like to go around the funeral home. But, uh, we don't like deadness. Uh, my friend, and I'll tell you what, the world is looking for something that's alive. And a lot of our churches that we go in are cold and dead and callous. Uh, uh, there's no life to them. We sing dead. Uh, we sing with just form and formality. Uh, my friend, we preach in the same way. Uh, uh, and we, we just operate in the same way. We got the same movement. Uh, and there's no life within our hearts. Uh, but revival means a 
returning to life. Uh, uh, my friend, Revelation 3 said you got a name that you're alive, but you're dead. Uh, you got a name that you live. You got a name that your Savior's alive. You got a, your name that you got what it by knees, but you're dead. Uh, and that word dead means you're not excited. You're not thrilled. You're moved. Uh, and my friend, there's no motion within you. Something that's live is going to move. Uh, something that's live can be stared. Uh, something that's dead ain't going to move. Uh, something that's dead can't be stared. Uh, and we need a resurrection. He said, well, thou not revive us again will you not resurrect us and bring life new to our hearts the example of life is Lazarus in John chapter 11 he was sick I'm going to tell you before you die most time you get sick Amen. Some people just fall dead. Uh, but uh, most people, they get sick. Uh, and then they, my friend, they get worse and then they die. Uh, and Lazarus was sick. Uh, and then the Bible said he died. Uh, and my friend, they sent for the Lord and the Lord come. They, I, I'm sure when he died or got sick, uh, they done everything they could to, to resurrect him from that deadness. Uh, and you know what? We're sick tonight. Uh, our churches are sick. Uh, and you know what we do? We try to, we try to turn every word in the world uh, uh, to find life. Uh, we'll, we'll come up with some new kind of program. Uh, we'll have some kind of big celebration. Uh, we'll do everything in the world and we'll try to copy the world uh, to bring life. Uh, but I'll tell you the only hope for life was left uh, was the Lord. Uh, and the psalmist ain't asking God uh, my friend to bless a program. Uh, he said will thou not revive us again. The type of people may rejoice. And Lazarus came. Uh, Martha said Lord if you been here my brother wouldn't have died and Mary said the same he said where is he and the Bible said he went and he spoke and life came to Elijah and he was he that was dead came forth with life I'm going to tell you we need that kind of resurrection that would bring us from deadness and my friend in coldness to life within ourselves it's kind of like taking an old fire and, and uh, you know, the coals is just laying down there and uh, it looks like it's about to smother out. Uh, but you can stoke that fire up. Uh, you know what? It'll liven up. Uh, throw a few little coals on there and stuff and it'll liven back up. Uh, I'm going to tell you, we need to stoke the fire that God has within our hearts uh, and the fire that God has within our church. Uh, we need a resurrection uh, of the fire of God. Uh, no wonder the world comes and walks in and leaves. Uh, people come and walk in and leave and never came back. They don't have nothing. They don't feel nothing. They don't have nothing. They don't see nothing that they don't have. But I tell you, when you come in here and you got life among you, my friend, and God begins to move, my friend, something's going to happen. We went through a long cold spell at our church and, and uh, they talk about a short winter. We had a long winter. <laughs> We had a long, and I mean, we we were struggling, and I I really sought the Lord. Lord, am I? Did I need to go? And, and and if I do, I'm willing. If somebody else needs to go, let them go. Whatever. And I was really seeking the Lord. We were just kind of in a form. Nobody getting saved. Nothing happening. Just coming, singing, going home, preaching. And my friend, but we we got to really. I preached the message a few weeks ago. I preached the message about my friend. I just kind of preached off the cuff. Brother Doug, just one of them, you know, you just get off the pew. And, and I got up and preached on that. My friend, it's time to build. It's time to build that Gillard Baptist Church. And our folks caught on to that thing. They went to work and went to visiting. And my friend, listen, and within three weeks, we had eight people join our church and two ladies got saved. And my friend, right now, our church is excited and thrilled. You know what happened? My friend, we begin to seek God and God begin to bring life. And my friend, the choir Sunday, they sang twice. They, they sung so good the first time when we sat down, I just called them back up and they sung again. And my friend, we got a different atmosphere. You know what happened? We just got resurrected from death to life and sinners are coming and people are being saved. We need a resurrection at this church that would bring life to this church. And when people come, they felt alive and they didn't feel dead. They felt like they wanted to come. I thought about I thought about Brother Doug a, a spiritual resurrection that like physical resurrection when Jesus comes. 
I thought about that. I wrote that down. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it talks about, my friend, that, uh, that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God's sound, the dead in Christ arise first and we which are alive remain shall be called up. And I thought about the rapture and the resurrection uh, and I thought about a revival that awakens the saint. Uh, he said, the trump's going to sound. Uh, you know, one of these days, the trump of God's going to sound. Uh, and my friend, that dead in Christ, that dead bunch, uh, my friend, that's been buried, it's out stripped us and we've placed down here beneath the sun when that trumpet sounds brother Doug that dead's going to awaken and they're going to rise we need a revival my friend that'll awaken the saints of God and they'll rise out of their deadness and their coldness and their carnality and they'll find life and they'll find fresh energy my friend we need a resurrection of life in our church that they know we don't just say we're alive but we are alive Think about, my friend, a revival that gets the saints on the move. <laughs> Not only will there be a resurrection of the dead, but my friend, the saints of God, we which are alive remain, shall be called up. We need a resurrection of the saints of God to get them on the move. Moving out for God, moving in the direction of God, moving to seek God, moving to sing for God, moving to witness for God, to labor for God, do whatever, get off the stool of do nothing and bring life. You can't bring life if you don't work a little bit. Amen. Need a resurrection, I thought about, that brings new vision. Yeah. The rapture, you know what's going to happen? We're going to see a new heaven yeah. and a new earth. Yeah. Well, we'll see things we ain't never saw before. <laughs> Hey man, we'll see things that I, we've only talked about, we've only heard and only preached about and thought about and sung about. But I tell you, when the rapture takes place, that dead's going to be brought to life. The saints will move out. And then we'll have a vision of things we never saw. We need a resurrection that would bring a vision in this church like a vision we ain't never saw. Hey, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, your pastor has visions of things that he wants to see happen right here at our church. I've been at our church 17 years and I've got visions of things when I went there. They ain't never got there yet. Some of them have been fulfilled, some of them may, but I still got that vision of things that, that God's going to do and God's going to move and God's going to work in our lives. And my friend, we need a resurrection, a revival that will make the world take notice. Well, when we go out of here and the church is out of here, the world will take notice. We need a revival that the world out under when they ride up down this community, they'll say, hey, man, something's going on over we yonder at right? a man your Baptist church. Right? I'm gonna tell you, you get revival going around here. You get God a moving and God a blessing. The word to get out. Right? They'll know it at Walmart. Right? They'll know it at uh, what's that place? Myers, whatever you call it. Right? They'll know it everywhere. Right? They'll know it in your neighborhood, on your job. Right? The word to get out. Hey, something happened at a man your Baptist church. Right? And it will be the fact that life has come to the church. We need a resurrection of life. He said, will thou not revive us again? I thought about this and I'll move to the second thought. What would happen if revival came to your church? What do you long for? Uh, <laughs> it's one thing, the brother, brother back here, and I'm not taking away from what you said. Who said that? The man with the funny pants on? Uh, I just got news for you. Golf or no golf, I wouldn't wear that. I'd, play, I'd feel funny. Amen. I, just, I couldn't handle that, man. I, I'm glad you were the, you're the man. Somebody said he's the man. He, I'm a sissy, but I, 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 I can't handle that. Don't, don't get me on them. Amen. I, I seen them before Brother Doug got him up there, and I said, what would compel a man to wire them on Wednesday night? Amen. I mean, them Sunday morning bridges, amen. Uh, uh, but anyway, let me get off of there. Uh, I thought about, uh, he talked about revival. Uh, uh, my friend, pray for revival. It's easy to say that. I'm not taking away. I'm not just picking on you, brother. Don't get all upset over it, okay? Uh, uh, I'll give you $20 and let me pick on you, okay? Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, I thought about, uh, uh, he said pray for revival. Uh, and we just do that out of habit. Uh, but what do we really long for? Uh, what do we long for? Uh, at Emmanuel Baptist Church, what do you long for? What are you looking for? What are you asking God? What kind of revival do you really want? Amen. Then I thought about this. I thought about this. Are you willing to take the steps that brings revival? Sometimes we want revival, but when we realize the steps that we've got to take to get it there, we back up. 
Amen. Then I thought about this. What changes would you make toward revival? What price would you pay for a revival to come? The psalmist David's asking without any reservation, will you send revival? I, I believe he's saying, God, send it. I'll pay the price. I want it. Whatever it takes, whatever change I need, whatever I need to do, whatever circumstances need to be changed, I want revival more than anything. I'm tired of being dead. I want to be alive. We need a revival that would... Resurrect the church. Yeah. Second of all, we need a revival that will rekindle old fires. He said, will thou not revive us again? The word again lets us know that there had been revival before. It must have been before because you can't do something again if you ain't never done it the first time. Huh? If you do something again, if you do something again, how's that Bojangles the other day? I don't know, y'all got Bojangles up here? Oh, y'all need Bojangles. Bojangles is good. They got gravy. Y'all don't know much about gravy, but we have gravy at home. <laughs> Bojangles has got good gravy. And, uh, and, I, and I'm, a bre- I'm a breakfast eater, and I, I eat breakfast every morning. I may, eat, I may skip lunch. I'm not much on lunch. I eat lunch, and if I eat lunch, I don't eat supper, but I always eat breakfast. And, and I said, Bojangles the other day and had that little biscuit and gravy, bowl of grits, and how I was eating all that stuff. I was still hungry. A little lady come around through there, you know, and uh, she's cleaning up tables, and she looked at me, and she said, Sir, she said, Could I help you? Uh, anything? Can I do anything for you? Can I take your plate? I said, I'll tell you what you can do. You can take that plate and run right back through that biscuit bowl if you want to. And they're just laughing and joking. She said, okay. And she just got it. Uh, next thing I come back, she had another big old biscuit uh, and had gravy all over it. Uh, I said, ma'am, what a hoe you? She said, don't owe me nothing. Uh, I said, I just said, hey, they told me, they told me this, whatever the customer need, do it. That's what you needed. I said, well, praise God. Uh, I let in to need it. Uh, my friend, you know what? I said, just go do it again. Uh, and that's what the psalmist David said. God, you've done it in the past. We've seen your glory. We've seen your shout. We've seen your move. We've seen your save sinners. We've seen you get right. We've seen things happen. Lord, why don't you just do it again? Take the old fire, stoke it up, and don't build a new one. Just stoke the one we got up and renew the fires that's within ourselves. Remember better days of dedication? Huh? And when you first joined this church, you thought this was heaven. <laughs> now some of you think it's the other place. <laughs> Y'all get that tonight about midnight. <laughs> hey man, I've had people join my church. Oh man, <laughs> had one late join my church, and I was preaching the other day, and, and I forgot. I forgot what I was fixing to say, Brother Doug, and I forgot I was standing right in front of her when I said it. And I said, this lady joined our church. She said, this is the most wonderful place I've ever seen. She said, Preacher, I can't wait to get to church on Sunday, and I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to hear you preach. You're the best preacher I've ever heard. I know she was lying, but I, I ate it up for a few minutes. Uh, uh, she said, you're the best preacher I've ever heard. I ain't never heard no preaching like that. I've been in a church all my life. I ain't never heard nobody preach like you preach. Uh, and said, I can't wait. And she was so excited. Uh, she's been here about five years. Uh, now she's missing on Wednesday night. Uh, and my friend, now she's not coming much on Sunday night. Uh, comes on Sunday morning. Uh, I noticed the other day she got out of the choir. I was preaching the other day. And I told her, I said, do you remember? when you was dedicated this church and you was excited about this church now you're dead and cold and your fire's going out you need to rekindle that fire of dedication I remember when the church boy that was a wonderful place we couldn't wait to get here it was dedicated to the services dedicated to what was going on days of great expectation days of full commitment rekindle that fire i tell you a good fire we've got over. Getting saved. <laughs> if y'all had to convince me, some of y'all, I don't know nothing about y'all, but some of my folks had to convince me that I needed to get saved and get what they had, I'd run. Because it looks like it's killing them. I mean, they get up, hey, God, I'm saved. Huh? You get up, say, anybody glad you're saved? You ever have them crap? Uh, they ain't got enough strength to raise their hand. They go, 
I said, I, I, I asked that the other, I'm, I'm, this, I'm telling you the truth. I asked that the other Sunday, and as a guy had his wife around his arm around his wife sitting there, I said, if you're glad you're saved, raise your hand. He said, <laughs> that's what he done. He said, and I happened to see it. I said, I didn't say your finger. I said, raise your hand. Yeah. We're, we, we're, we're over the fact that we're saved. We ought to be the most excited people we're saved. I, I thought about my little old granddaughter and I can't preach without my granddaughters. But I thought my little old granddaughter there playing ball and boy, she's a playing basketball and she's a playing softball and she's good at it and I like it. I go watch them play and my friend, if I don't go, she busts the door down. Papa, I hit a home run. Papa, I scored so many points. Papa this, Papa that. And my friend, I went over there and watched her play and my friend, every time she, she hit two home runs that night, every time she hit a run, she was running around the bases and she was sticking her thumb up at me. And she was running down to that. She was excited. She come running up her. And my friend all excited and thrilled. And I thought, man, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could go to the house of God and people come in, I'm saved, I'm saved. I'm born again. My sins are forgiven. I'm going to heaven. I don't have to go to hell. Thank God you asked me why I'm happy. I'll tell you why. My sins are gone. They're underneath the blood of Christ. The resurrection of being excited that we're saved. Sorry, brother. Southerners act like this, okay? <laughs> Amen. The time that you're surrendered more to service than living for God. Excited. I got a little preacher in my church. It's a happy boy. I got a little preacher in my church and I said, I want you to preach. This was on Sunday. I said, Wednesday night week, you preach. That's a week and a half, Brother Doug. And on Wednesday, I get a text about 2 o'clock Wednesday. Now, we start at 7. He's had a week and a half. I get a text from him. He said, Brother Gutson, you might as well go ahead and preach. I just ain't got nothing. <laughs> huh? So I had five hours to get something. Amen. Didn't take me that long, but I had it. What I'm saying is, boy, I'll tell you what, when I, when I first started preaching, oh, yeah. hey, I've been preaching, if I live to March, if I live to March, it'll be 49 years. I'm shooting for 50. I'll be 49 years in, in March. And Brother Doug, when I started preaching, I wasn't the best preacher in the world, but I never went to church. I wasn't ready. Yeah, right. I'm serious. I went to church. Sometimes I'd sit over and pray, Daddy, get horse. <laughs> Amen. I, I went ready. If I got to preach, I was ready. If I didn't, I'd come back to the next service ready. I had an outlet in my Bible. Hey, I'm 60, nearly 65 years old. I've been preaching all these years. And if I come up here for revival and Brother Greg's a preacher, you can bank on it. I got an outlet in my Bible. Just in case he don't make it, get sick. Just to preach to preachers. I just want to be ready. I want to be ready. I'm ready to preach. I'm ready to do something for God. <laughs> you can call it what you want to. You say, why are you ready to preach? Because God called me to. I like it. Amen. <laughs> and we ought to be a revival. Your kennels in old flames. And then I'm going to say thirdly, i got to move on. Dad, I'm sorry. He told me 10 minutes. A revival that rebuilds broken fellowship. He said, Thou will not, will thou not revive thy people. Huh? He didn't say revive the world. Can't revive something that's dead. He said, revive thy people. You know, we walk with God as an individual, but we're not isolated. I'm going to tell you what, whether you believe it or not, we need each other. I'm sick of these churches got their little cliques. This little clique goes to McDonald's and this little clique goes to so and so. You can't go over there because we go over there. And we got enough in our clique. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Churches fellowship with the same crowd all the time. Why doesn't do with nobody else? And, amen. Come on, man. I'm sick of the, I'm, I'm sick of these preachers. And Brother Doug, if I ever do this, run me off. 
But I'm sick of some of these preachers, though, when they come into your churches, the only one they want to fellowship with is the one that's got some money. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Right. Wow. Huh? Amen. Had one preacher done me that way, had it for a revival, and he butted up with some money folks in our church. That's all he butted up with. Some of the other folks tried to get him to go out and eat one night, and he didn't want to go, and he went out and ate with them people. Huh? When he left on, when he left on Tuesday night, I told him I, I, I didn't tell him, but I thought, well, happy trails. <laughs> happy trails. If you're here just to get money, if you're just here to pick on certain people, I'm gonna tell you what. Listen, I, I, my friend, we ought to be the kind of people that, that we want to rekindle old relationships with each other. And my friend, listen, bless me the ties that bind. And Bible talks about how good and how pleasant it's for men to dwell together in unity. My friend, we need each other. We need the poor. We need the rich. We need the good. We need the bad. We need the educated, uneducated. We need all of us to labor. We are called laborers together with God. I'm sick of this crowd. You can't sit on my pew because I sat there. <laughs> Amen. Baptists get mad at each other. They stay mad for 40 years. Beard ranking buddies, they'll just cuss each other, beat each other's head in, buy each other a beer, hug each other's neck, go to the house. Come back next Friday night and do it again. Baptist. Huh? Amen. Baptist, my friend. You, you cross them and they, they'll sit there like a prune. Amen. 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 The book is put in the the book in the the book of Acts. I can't say it. The church in the book of Acts wasn't doing nothing. You read it. They was not doing nothing. Now the church in Acts didn't start in Pentecost. The Holy Ghost fell on the church. Church was already existed. They're dead. They wasn't doing nothing. Nobody was getting saved. Nobody was my friend fellowshipping. Hey, just like some of you, come to church, go to house. Come to church, go to house. My friend, nothing, no revival, no staring, no nothing. But the Spirit of God fell. And you know what? They begin to break bread. They begin to pray. They begin to fellowship one with another. And my friend, they begin to go to house to house and enjoy each other. And the next thing you know, 3,000 got saved. 4,000 got saved. The Lord had the church daily. The church was revived. People's need was supplied. You know what happened? They got together and loved one another. Amen. Amen. Good. Good. <laughs> Man, when you first joined church, you, th- you just want to get in on everything. Right. Now you want to pick. <laughs> well, that ain't my thing. We didn't ask you if it's your thing. We just announced it come. Next time we'll do your thing. And who knows, you might like the thing if you tried. It ain't my thing. <laughs> huh? If they're in charge, my kids ain't going. <laughs> yeah, they ain't going. You know what? We need a revival. One of the best revivals I've ever seen. I've probably told you this before, but one of the best revivals that Doug ever had in my ministry was in, uh, in uh, Mount Pilot, North Carolina. I preached a meeting over right out of Winston-Salem at Mount Pilot, North Carolina. Never been in that church in my life. Never been in it in my life. Had three rows of pews, and I'd never been in that church, and I was late. I'm never late. I'm, I, I hardly ever late. If I'm late, you can say something is wrong. And I was late. Choir was singing when I got there. And I came in and sat down over here. I didn't even know who the preacher was. He called me on the phone and booked me. I didn't know what he looked like. I sat in over and I asked the guy, I said, which one's the pastor? He said, that and right over yonder. And he come over and said, met me and, and talked to me a minute. Then they sang in the service. And, and then I preached that night in the big way of preaching. I was preaching and I said, you take this lady right here. And I pointed her and I skipped the middle row and walked over to the next row. And about four rows back, I said, and this lady right here. I said, supposing they wasn't on talking terms and hadn't spoken much. I, I said, you think God's going to send revival? He got quite a mouse, poor little old pastor turned pale as a ghost. And my friend, I thought, man, I've done something. 
and that. And I preached and when I gave the invitation, that lady came, that lady came. Then they met in the altar and got right with each other. Pastor said they hadn't spoken in six months. And I'll tell you, when they got together, revival broke out. We went several weeks. People got saved. We need a revival. That my friend, we rebuild, rebuild broken fellowship. Yeah. Can I say this not get in trouble? <laughs> if me and brother Doug lose his fellowship, perish that thought, but if we did. You know the way the best way to get fellowship back? Is go hang out together. Because <laughs> if I stay in Tennessee, I'm going to say that. Sorry, Doug. I don't like him. I used to like him, don't like him no more. Amen. As much as I like Ned, I'd say I don't even like Ned no more because he's married to her. <laughs> don't like the kids, I don't like nobody. You know. But if I want to rebuild that fellowship, then I call Brother Doug and I say, hey, I'm going to come up, we're going to eat. We're going to go play a game of golf. We're going to go run the bookstores and we're going to do that. And we don't have to say a word, but Doug, we just start fellowshipping back and we rebuild that back. Huh? Somebody done you wrong, somebody don't like you, just go hang out with them. Invite them over for supper. <laughs> don't put no poison in the food, just invite them over for supper. <laughs> fix, fix your best plate, amen? I'm, I'm serious. I don't hope you think I'm funny. I'm not, but I'm telling you, you rebuild that. I tell you how you be rebuild fellowship. My friend, you know what they do when you go to these dope things, you know, when they go to these dope places. I went to one of them places. I wasn't on dope, but I went. I had a girl in our church on dope, and I said, I'm going away. And she said, you, she didn't want to go. I said, yeah, you're going, because I'm going away. I went five weeks, every week I went to dope school. I ain't what they call it, what they call it, Ned? Rehab. <laughs> I call it dope school, <laughs> Well, she was on dope and was in her school. Dope school, okay? Told you I'm from South. But anyway, we went to, I went to Rahab. Five weeks I went with that girl. You know what they done? They started rebuilding her confidence and rebuilding and working on her. And you know what they did then? They brought her husband in. And they worked with her and her husband and built that relationship. Then they brought her kids in. And they started working on that relationship with their kids. You know what they're doing? They was rebuilding that broken fellowship that had destroyed in that home. And I thought, man, that's what we need in our churches. If you've got broken fellowship, you just need to keep coming to church and, and let God rebuild that thing and work in your life and get them together, talk with them, fellowship. We need a revival that we re rebuild broken fellowship. Let me close with this. Not only that, we need a revival that restores Christian joy. Amen. Amen. Wilt thou not revive us? Resurrect us. Again, rekindle low fires. Thy people may rejoice. Rekindle. But he said that they may rejoice in thee. If I read that right, if I read that right, the only thing he won't do is rejoice. <laughs> if you get to rejoicing, the other things are going to happen. Amen. There were so many defeated Christians. Everywhere you go, everybody's defeated, depressed. Huh? Everybody's depressed. Amen. And pain pills will depress you. Nerd pills, pain pills. Soap operas will depress you. Watching Kentucky play ball will depress you. I mean, it, it's all kinds of things that depress you. You can bring all kinds of depression. Everybody, you see, I'm depressed. Amen. They just gonna live. Everything they just gonna take up campground and live there, amen. Right. And, and they're depressed and, and they're discouraged and they're backsliding. But the psalmist David said, "We ain't they, we've hung our harps on the willow, but God revive us for one reason: we can find life and rejoice." Amen. Again. Right. Amen. Huh? Good. Oh boy, in our church, he's a redneck. He come, he said, "Preacher." I said, yeah, he said, uh, you know that stuff you do when you, you, know, you don't get married again, but you do do that stuff. I said, what, you talking about renewing your vows? He said, yeah. He said, 
Me and my wife won't do that. Said, We've just kind of got cold and complacent down through the years. And I said, well, you think that's going to help? i tell you what I told him. <laughs> I said, you think that's going to help or you just want another honeymoon? That's what I told him. He said, well, so-and-so, they done that, and they went on stay two or three days and come back, they're just happy. I said, I'm going to tell you something, buddy. I said, I'm going to tell you how to refresh your marriage. I said, keep them vows every day. Amen. I said, don't wait six months, a year, five years down the road and say, well, we're going to do that. And ain't nothing wrong with that. If you don't do that, help yourself. But I said, if you'd keep them vows every day, treat her like you're supposed to on a daily basis, and she treats you, I said, it'd be honey in the honeymoon every day. You'd have happiness and joy. You know what's wrong with us? We won't come in here on Sunday night like a Christian. Get happy. God make us happy. Ain't been happy in six days, but we want to be happy when we get to church. That's right. Amen. <laughs> the joy of the Lord's our strength. I tell you, we we we're we're a dead bunch. Amen. How long has it been since you had a spell? <laughs> Amen. Amen. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a new eating place. Kind of. Y'all got a new eating place? Oh, hey, we do have one of them. Net. What'd you call it? That Mexican play? Chewy. Chewies. I guess you go over and eat and you chew it. I guess. <laughs> we got one of them. New place come to town. You know what we do? We head out. We got to try it. Hundred eating places here, but we got to try that. We'll stand in line forty-five minutes because it's new. And we're like, it's a good, we'll go back, and we'll go back, and we'll go back. It ain't long, we'll say, good Lord, you know what? That food ain't near as good as it was. Well, when you eat it six days a week, it ain't going to be as good as it was the first time. And you start looking for something else, and you start looking for something else. You're looking for something else. Amen. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, that's what's happening in our church this day. People start looking out yonder. And they think they see life. They see big buildings and growths and programs and health centers and all this in the church. And they think that's life. I'm going to tell you, when Jesus comes, the health center is going to be there. The entertainment's going to be there. But life comes from quickening of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I am the life. If you want life, feed on Jesus. Amen. Now, let me, let me, let me finish right here. I'm through. Let me tell you where we're at. This is a quick... Quick little message where we're at. In Exodus chapter 12, it said, take a lamb. Take a lamb, slay it. Put the blood over the, over the top of the door. The death angel comes, the elder son get behind the blood. He said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. We just shout. We preach on that, preach on the blood. I'm under the blood. I'm behind the blood, covered by the blood. Blood's been shed. We have our spell for spell. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not taking away from that. But that ain't all that scripture said. It said, once after you get behind that blood, it said, eat the lamb. Feed on the lamb. And some people just run around hollering, I'm in the blood. I'm under the blood. I'm under the blood. And they ain't eat the lamb, Jesus. He said, eat the lamb. Eat it all. Eat it with your shoes on and, and your lawns girded. Eat it ready to serve. Eat all of it. And eat it. You got a great journey ahead. You got things coming. You got obstacles. And if you don't watch it, if you don't feed on the lamb, you'll get discouraged and you'll wander in the world. It's like the rest of that crowd did. Amen. Caleb ate the lamb and he made it. You know what's wrong with us? We're not feasting off the lamb and we've lost our joy. Lost our joy. But they'll not revive us again. That people may rejoice in the day. Which I'm through.